हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू अचानक बाला इंडिया दिस इज वम सी हियर एट बाला इंडिया एंड आई एम वेरी वेरी अगेन बैक विद फुल एनर्जी टू डिस्कस दिस टॉपिक ऑफ बायोलॉजी बायोटेक्नोलॉजी दैट इज योर एप्लीकेशंस पार्ट यस दिस इज अ सो इजी चैप्टर दिस पार्ट इज सो इजी इट इज सो प्लीजिंग इट इज सो यू नो इट जस्ट कंप्लीट विद इन Uh, like a forty minutes or so of lecture. I hope you will listen to it. It will be a one-shot video. Without any further ado, let's get into the video right away. Get notices. No need to get your notices. Just listen to me. This is very simple lesson. No need to get your notices. Please concentrate here. Concentrate on my writing. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Reveal the text. have a test guys you have to give your test uh, that is uh, your next session guys wait a minute this you know just a minute i'm just uh, resizing the color or i'm just changing the color give me a sec guys mm. okay this perfect yes you have to give your biotechnology test including both the chapters two chapters of biotechnology we have principles and processes and this applications part in the next next session uh, i'll be announcing it soon on the instagram you can join there uh, it will be a recorded class if you want live please uh, comment down below if you want live uh, for this uh, you know uh, the test series now this is your champion series that i'm going to start Uh, without any further ado, now we have waited two minutes. We have only forty minutes of time in order to complete this chapter. Let's go fast and um, let's see how fast we could complete this chapter. Starting with biotechnology applications. Where does this biotechnology take place uh, in applications? Where does this biotechnology stand at all in these applications? Where are these? Where is this biotechnology used? First of all. actually biotechnology applications are many there are many applications of biotechnology guys not one there, this biotechnology is used in very various fields uh, like it is used in medicine in the field of medicine okay medicine it is used in the field of agriculture agriculture it is used in the field of forensics yeah uh, forensics it is used many many places it is used in many places not one place this biotechnology finds its place okay not it is there is no a little kind or a little thing where this biotechnology does not find its use everywhere if you see everything if you want to include biotechnology you can include definite okay what is this biotechnology doing that it is having so much of its applications so much of its applications in many fields what is this doing actually as uh, for this answer by uh, the ncert textbook has given us uh, three main points okay in order to answer this question this particular question what is biotechnology doing in order to provide these many applications why is it taking so so the first uh, thing is why does uh, this biotechnology uh, what does this biotechnology is having special the first thing is it provides it provides a, the best catalyst the best catalyst okay it provides the best catalyst in the form of improvised organism i can see that uh, this green Ha. Huh. Okay. Do not working. Let's convert it into this. This is not at all seen in the background. From the next class, let me do one thing. Let me use the white background, guys. That would be better. Yes. If I use any color on white background, it is best. Okay. Somewhat it is okay. Not at all. Okay. Let us do the white. I wanted to make this colorful lecture, but this. green screen is not letting me okay no problem leave it now it provides the best catalyst for what what things does it provide best catalyst how can you say 
what is a catalyst first of all catalyst here simply as per the ncrt it means it provides the best organisms in order for biotechnology best organism it helps us to choose between organisms it helps us to choose between organisms which organism shall i use for this biotechnology okay it is providing organisms okay we are accepting what is the next thing that is it is providing you have said uh, three types three things are there what is the next thing that this biotechnology is uh, doing so pleasing that we are using biotechnology in every field nowadays the second thing is it is only creating optimum conditions yes we have seen in the processing the principles and processes lesson that we are creating or biotechnology itself is creating the optimal conditions for the growth of this catalyst okay okay it is providing optimal conditions for the growth of this catalyst the second, third one actually we are, we are culturing the culture medium with in which we are culturing microbes which are used for biotechnology is your optimal condition that is provided by your biotechnology okay what is the third one it itself it is providing the product itself it is providing the pure product in order to say add pure word why i am telling you this pure word because itself is providing your your the downstream processing or downstreaming what is downstreaming there is not only purification this was a thing that i have skipped in the last session why did i skip i have told you that there is a point remaining in the ncrt please read it since there is nothing of much uh, uh, by uh, for telling in this downstream processing that's so easy the downstream processing you have to understand the continuous culture and batch culture that's it fed batch system and continuous system you'll get that downstream processing okay these are the three things that biotechnology is providing itself it is providing an organism itself it is providing the optimal condition itself it is providing the pure product itself it is providing the techniques to purify the product that we have obtained in order to get a pure product that is why biotechnology is this popular okay i have said the biotechnology has found it uses in many various fields starting with we will be talking about biotechnological applications in agriculture okay application apps in agriculture now do not go to play store or app store search apps for agriculture okay agriculture apps means here simply means applications guys please do not uh, misunderstand okay apps means applications okay no. the first thing the first thing in order to understand this is okay the first thing in order to understand before going into it uh, what we have to see as per ncrt since it is given we have to see the types of agriculture okay what are the types of agriculture that our farmers do in india or in the world basically there are three types of agriculture guys either the farmer can use agrochemicals the chemicals which are produced Uh, for agriculture the pesticides fertilizers etc or else he can follow the old methods of organic farming organic farming organic agriculture or else he can go with the biotechnology the modern technique of using bio uh, genetically modified organisms so now what is this genetically modified organisms quickly yes this genetically modified organisms are nothing but those are the organisms whose genetic material has been altered or has been modified in order to the uh, in order to sustain uh, the use for humans okay in order for the use of humans okay genetically gmos we call it as genetically modified organisms genes have been altered whose genes have been altered for human use 
okay those are called as genetically modified organisms if i modify we have seen in the previous video that we modify organisms okay we are modifying a bacteria that bacteria whose genes we are modifying the plasmid of the bacteria plasmid is nothing but the gene of bacteria yes double stranded dna circular dna extra dna of the bacteria we are modifying so that bacteria that particular bacteria is called as a gmo since we have modified its gene for the human use okay clear clear now now uh now uh, we will be seeing uh, the use of these uh, genetically modified organisms in agriculture we generally call it as a genetically modified crops okay while coming into agriculture we call it as genetically modified crops gmc okay gmc genetically modified crops we modify crops for the usage of um uh, you know for producing the pest resistant varieties so in order to going into the video let us uh, discuss uh, in order to going into the subject let us discuss the basic problems that are faced by problem uh, farmers while uh, you know doing agriculture first of all they face the problem of pest second thing is that they face the problem of scarcity of water water is not available in many uh, many uh, you know many areas next one the third thing that is the worry about the most important thing is yield sometimes they get very less yield they put lots and lots of money yeah they put lots and lots of money they put lots and lots of money but yield is not very good the fourth thing they worry about the transplant uh, sorry transportation like Uh, once the yield has been produced it, it it does not remain with the farmers it has to be transported into the market and that is called as post harvest loss these are the very threatening things of farmers very threatening complaints of farmers one they they uh, you know they come across pests for that they use fertilizers or pesticides second one they got irrigation problems third one they get low yield fourth one they get is post harvest losses one of the best example for these post harvest losses is your tomato are baba why you are coming in every slide get away tomato okay this tomato generally they are soft right tomatoes have you ever seen the tomato no sir okay let me try to draw some tomato here since you told me that you haven't seen a tomato let us make it little more red and use this yes fine most generally tomatoes are this color in our uh, you know city that is i'm afraid of using this color of green right this is the exact color of my see that color which i am choosing is green and it is shown to you as yes. so that color is which i am choosing is a green no 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 okay i am drawing with blue guys please Yes, I sent that little cat home. No worries. And now, now this is your tomato, guys. These tomatoes are uh, really soft, actually. Uh, yeah, go home, ask your mom a tomato, and uh, try to uh, squeeze it, uh, squeeze it between your two fingers like this. It breaks immediately. It you know if you try to squeeze this like uh, squeeze uh, squeeze the tomato like that, uh, it it converts into juice. So this is the thing. what's happening these farmers produce tons and tons of tomatoes they put them them into baskets baskets the thing is the tomatoes which are below the baskets are being pressed against the, uh, pressed by the top layer tomatoes and half of the tomatoes say for the example half of the tomatoes get spoiled in the transportation itself there is only remaining 50% which is paid to the farmers 
but they have put their 100% more than 100% for the yield yes more than 100% but their yield is so little their money is so little so this case the post harvest loss generally and usually happens with the tomatoes okay tomatoes the biggest problem in order to eradicate this problem we have used biotechnology and created the flavor saver tomato which is hard in nature which is hard in nature and it just reduces post harvest losses so biotechnology can eradicate these general problems which are faced by our farmers in india and in the world okay so how how is it? how is this biotechnology used to eradicate the problems what are you talking let us see how this biotechnology is um, used now now green revolution in india have you ever heard about this green revolution here there are two important points that we have, you and me have to concentrate on green revolution for a time for a time let us keep it like that okay green revolution in india have you ever heard about that have you ever heard about this green revolution yes uh, by whom this green revolution was started in india yes ms swaminathan on which crops yes wheat wheat and rice and rice who is the father of green revolution all over the world norman borla yes borla borla he is the father of uh, this green revolution all over the world and from him our ms swaminathan has learned something okay again i sent to that cat and i tied it no Borlang was the father of green revolution all over the world and MS Swaminathan is in India. Wheat and rice varieties were created using this green revolution. Since they were the major crops of India, northern part of India eats wheat mostly since they use rotis, uh, those breads, Indian breads famously called as and southern part of India we eat rice. Clear? Clear. Now, this green revolution, use of this green revolution, it has multiplied, multiplied the crop production by three times. We will be seeing this in the strategies. Though this has tripled the crop production, the crop production has been tripled by the green revolution. Though this tripled the crop production, unfortunately, it is still not sufficient to provide the necessary food requirements in order to uh, you know feed the whole population of india it is some 130 crores of people in india who are residing not 130 130 cr people 130 crores people are residing in india and this number is keeping on increasing we have seen in the reproductive health chapter yes this number is going on increasing it is going on increasing very rapidly in order to provide food requirements for this population it is very difficult for the government so in order to eradicate this problem they have brought the uh, biotechnology into play where you can create pest resistant high yielding pest resistant high yielding uh, reduce post harvest lot, uh, losses and more yield of course high yielding varieties of plants which are produced by biotechnology how they can produce this they just simply mix the genes we have seen in the process how that process happens yes they simply mix the genes between uh, two uh, plants two uh, higher group of plants like if the plant one plant is resistant to diseases another plant okay guys hoping that would that cat again would not come yes the population of india is growing in order to make food sufficient for this growing population we use biotechnology this is very simple technique we use why we use biotechnology we will not see uh, in this uh, thing in this lecture we will not see how is this be uh, how is this being done 
we have already completed how that has been done we have already completed we'll only study about the uses of biotechnology here that's the thing for today okay now see now see yes uh, gm has been used to create tyler made plants what are tyler made plants ncrt uses the word ncrt time in order to play tyler made plants see when you go to a tyler you give different pieces of cloth you give different types of cloth you know uh, with the different designs and you ask him to join them together what does the tyler do the tyler nicely cuts out a low outline like this wait see and the uh, tyler he cuts nicely an outline which is uh, perfect in sh shape like this yes this is perfect in shape and he also does the same thing with this he also does the same thing with this he also cuts a nice outline of this piece of cloth now we have cut the jeans now think that we have cut the jeans now what the tailor do the tailor does stitching Yes, that was. This is the last time I'm trying. If not, I'll just continue my lecture. Whatever does, and that thing happens. Okay. Now the tailor takes that piece of thread that is very sufficient, that is very in similar color to this one. Yes, he uses the same restriction enzyme, and he stitches these two cloths. He stitches these two cloths. The restriction enzyme is here thread. So that is the thing. That is the thing that NCRT makes. the tailor made cloth means this one tailor made plant means this one Anywhere. you can use it anywhere so that is your bacillus thuringiensis it is the most used organism most modified organism which is used in biotechnology bacillus thuringiensis next one this bt toxin actually what happens is some applications of biotechnology in agriculture that you will study in detail are production of pest resistant crops Uh, which could decrease the amount of pesticide use why we are producing pest resistant crops in order to decrease the pesticide use and increase the mineral efficiency of plants in order to uh, take up uh, you know use the minerals use minerals more efficiently which they taken which they take up and this reduces the soil erosion which is 
are uh, going out the soil is also going out it has taken many millions years of year, of years in order to form the soil it is also going away so in order to prevent that also we are using biotechnology which uh, uh, increases the uh, mineral efficiency of the plant the next one is one of the thing that is given in our ncrt the example of bts we have produced many crops using bt one it is your bt potato one it is your bt tomato one not tomato i hope tomato is there yes tomato or uh, bt cotton the important thing which is given in our ncrt bt rice what is bt rice we have produced golden rice which is uh, rich in vitamin a vitamin a rice that is called as golden rice next one your potato soy soya bean bt brinzel etc etc we have used this bt toxin this bt toxin gene which infect plants in many ways we have created these many things these many things so the main example main concentration is your bt cotton in this bt cotton also nothing is there to remember just remember these two actually bt cotton okay before going into cry gene let me explain you some part which is given actually some strains of bacillus thuringiensis produce proteins that kill insects okay there are some strains of bt that kill insects so it is used as pesticide bio pest bio pesty okay spelling is wrong no problem no problem no problem pesticide bio pesticide it is a bio pesticide since it some uh, some species of this bio uh, bacillus thuringiensis is not species in order to say uh, the strains of bacillus thuringiensis uh, they are used as bio pesticide since they kill insects what are the insects that they kill they kill lipido lipidopterans lipidopterans the insects belonging to the class of lipidopterans it can it also kills uh, coleopterans the the examples are important i hope they can ask and need yes uh, next one dipterans okay leopterans examples are tobacco budworm and army worm tobacco budworm and army worm coleopterans uh, example is beetles and uh, dipterans example is flies and mosquitoes okay these are your uh, insect groups that this bacillus thuringiensis strains kill okay bio pesticide bacillus thuringiensis uh, you know uh, is used as a bio pesticide bio fertilizer insecticidal protein okay why this bio why why is this bt toxin this gene is called as bt toxin why is this not killing the plant it why it is not killing the bacterium if it is present inside it why it is able to not why it is not able to kill that plant why it is only killing uh, this uh, uh, insect actually bacillus thuringiensis bt toxin gene it is in the form of inactive form it is in in the form of inactiveness inactive state it is in inactive state inside the host organism once uh, an insect comes and uh, feeds on the leaves of this uh, bt once the uh, insect comes and beat uh, uh, you know feeds on the leaves of this bt crop which is uh, generated using biotechnology this bt toxin would go into the gut of the insect and inside the gut of the insect due to alkaline not acidic alkaline ph due to alkaline ph this is very important this is very important put a star mark put a star mark for this alkaline ph it gets activated and it creates pores inside the intestines it creates pores inside the gut and it makes gut porous and insufficient for uh, you know um, not the gut now it is not available for absorption of minerals and therefore absorption of nutrients sorry therefore the insect dies that is the end for insect 
okay this is how bt kills the insects now in while coming into bt cotton you have to learn two or uh, two things one it is your uh, the chrysin actually you have to learn about the chrysin this chrysin helps uh, uh, there are two diseases that are commonly prone to uh, cotton plants one it is a cotton bollworms uh, and the second one it is your corn borers okay these two uh, corn borers and cotton bollworms are the uh, major diseases that infect this uh, uh, this cotton plants actually chrysin helps in this chrysin helps in this now there are two types three types of chrysin cry one ab cry two ab cry two ab and cry one ac these two code uh, these two help in eradication of cotton bollworms bollworms how did you remember see while coming into cotton bollworms one is two one is one okay now how to remember which is two which is one see uh, remember bollworms okay uh, remember bollworms yeah yeah that part will be remembered for you so bollworms b uh, cry gene cry a b B. So the part uh, the the cry A B part the cry A B second part helps in the uh, you know eradication of this. You know one is one is cry A one yeah cry one sorry one is cry one second one is cry two that is clear right in bollworms. Which cry uh, which cry gene is is uh, it is the second one. You, are, you can remember it by bollworms disease. Bollworms B, B, uh, the chrysin with B is your second one. Cry 2 A, B, Cry 1 A, C and Cry 1 A, B codes for or kills uh, corn borers. Okay, this is how you can remember. Next one and last uh, last application in your agriculture is your RNAi, RNA silencing technology or RNA technology. This is very in short given in our NCRT, but put that NCRT aside. I am gonna explain you this. The thing is here, if you uh, take this, uh, what is this RNA? First of all, actually in tobacco plant, in tobacco plant. There is a disease that appears in the roots. The roots get, uh, uh, you know, nodules. The roots form nodules like this, and it does not help in the absorption of minerals. If this is a normal root, like this, nodules are formed in tobacco plant in the roots. Well, due to a virus, due to a nematode called as nematode, nematode, which is called as. Uh, Milio de Gaina, Milio de Gaina incognitia, not just incognitia. Mm -hmm. No, Milio de Gaina incognitia, it is a nematode, it is a nematode which causes diseases in tobacco, which causes uh, diseases in tobacco, it infects the roots of the tobacco causing a great reduction in the yield in order to eradicate this disease what our scientists have done is we have used the uh, you know biotechnology in order to silence this rna actually nematodes use rna in order to create diseases their genetic material is rna in order to create these diseases they use rnas okay now what we have done is we have silenced this rna this rna of the nematode is called as sense rna and the rna which we have created is called as anti sense rna which is in complementary to this sense rna remembered remember got it in your mind now let us see get it in your mind now let us see the procedure how is this done actually this is a cell of the tobacco plant this is a cell of the root of the tobacco plant here comes the nematode, here comes the nematode, inside the nematode there is an RNA piece, there is an RNA piece, once this RNA has entered here, once this RNA has entered, mRNA is formed, from mRNA protein is synthesized, once a protein has been synthesized, disease comes, disease comes, we put check for this uh, procedure, 
actually okay uh, now see look at the screen not my face okay look at the screen but not my face we put the we put check for this disease actually at during this stage only we put a check for this disease during this stage only we will not allow uh, the rna in order to produce proteins how is it how is it possible at all yes what we do is we isolate this mrna which is causing which is causing the uh, you know disease this is the rna of the generally promoter terminator is present promoter and terminator is present like this what we do is we just remember uh, reverse okay remember that we just reverse uh, the terminator and uh, terminator and promoter sequences like this terminator comes first and promoter comes second this forms as an anti sense rna and this is uh, complementary to this sense rna to this rna it is in complementary in nature to this rna now what we do is we okay now what we do is we put sense rna and anti sense rna together and we release it into the cell of this nematode we release into this uh, nematode what happens inside the nematode what happens inside the nematode actually uh, these uh, two anti sense rna and sense rna are in complementary to each other they form double stranded rna once they form double stranded rna this uh, double stranded rna actually sorry that is not put into the nematode but it is introduced into the plant cells actually what happens is uh, once uh, this are two in complementary structures yes once they are complementary structures uh, they form binding they form hydrogen bonds once they form hydrogen bonds what happens they form double stranded rna double stranded rna am i right they form double stranded rna once this double stranded rna is formed since eukaryotic cells does not increase double stranded rna they release a protein they release an enzyme called as dicer which cuts away this double stranded rna and the, uh, when this double stranded rna is cut away this uh, dicer and one single stranded anti sense rna form a pair and this uh, um, you know leaves into the nematode and it destroys the nematode's rna and therefore there is no protein there is no mrna synthesis there is no disease see how did we use biotechnology here in order to eradicate this disease very simply in order to eradicate this disease very simply yes clear yeah next one next one it is your zoology part biotechnology application apps in medicine medicine i hope this lecture would not complete in 40 minutes guys please cooperate with me please uh, okay for some 50 minutes 50 minutes come on come on let us do let us do there are uh, for using this biotechnology in medicine we have uh, many recombinant therapeutics recombinant therapeutics or therapies simply okay we have recombinant therapies what are these recombinant therapies we use a biotechnology and modify the genes and we create different different therapies in order to eradicate different problems okay there are almost 30 in the world and 12 are from india there are almost 30 in the world and 12 are from india the first important thing that we have to learn is about the humulin production humulin previously humulin means human insulin guys humulin means human insulin previously when this bt was not there when this uh, biotechnology was not there what they did is they produce humulin from um, cattle's liver okay pig's liver okay they have produced uh, this uh, uh, humulin or human insulin from cattle pigs ncrt here it uses a word ncrt actually ncrt actually uses a small word called as slaughtered 
cattle. Selected cattle has been used for the production of humulin. Why, why they stopped this production? Actually, production of humulin or human insulin, listen to my words very carefully. Production of human insulin from non-human sources, non-human sources leads to leads to unwanted immune responses. So what we did is, what we did is, we have ins we have biotechnology now in our hand in modern days. We use biotechnology many ways. We use by biotechnology. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to reduce the size of uh, this in order to wet win. Okay, since we now we have biotechnology in our hand, what we are doing is we have isolated human insulin. We have isolated human insulin. Now we introduced it into E. coli bacteria. We introduced it into E. coli bacteria and we have cultured this modified E. coli bacteria and we are producing lots and lots of human insulin. Humulin. We are producing lots and lots of human insulin and that is given in the form of injections. Why it has to be injected first of all? So the topic is why it has to be why this humulin cannot be taken as uh, tablets okay why it cannot be taken as tablets the first question arises in your mind why it has to only given through injection actually humulin your human insulin it is in protein this protein once it has uh, once we take this protein through or uh, tablets what happens is once it has uh, uh, gone into our stomach we have pepsin pepsin this acts on this protein and uh, this acts on this insulin and digests this protein there is no human insulin now so that is why what we have done is we have started injecting this insulin into the human body human body once we started injecting in the human body there is no pepsin there so no problem with the insulin now now what, which company did start this first of all the first company to start this it is an uh, very famous american company i i don't know is it famous or not i'm just using for the hype okay it is called as ellie lily company ellie lily company yes ellie lily company of america it is an american company uh, has first started production of this human insulin using the e coli bacteria in the year 1980 in the year 1983 now they faced a major issue in while producing this actually now we are going into the structure of insulin structure insulin ka structure kya hai kya hai beta kya hai tell me insulin structure kya hai beta tell me yes Wait a minute guys again adjusting the camera for you guys you guys will not like the session and go feels okay I take much uh, time okay no no do not tell sentimental jokes you fool you cannot handle those okay okay okay, okay. Now start. Now start. Actually, we are going into the structure of insulin. Actually, insulin contains a three chains of polypeptide. It is a it is a peptide, guys. It contains three chains. Okay, wait a minute. Three peptide chains. It contains three peptide chains linked together by disulfide bridges. Linked together by disulfide bridges clear clear it contains a three peptide which is generally linked together by disulfide bridges okay now what are these a why are you telling us b why are you telling us c a b c these are the three structures but but here is a twist the twist comes into the play the twist comes into play here the twist is it does not come in the sequence that of alphabetical order it comes in a c b or b c a if you uh, read like this bca if you are a left hander you read like this bca if you are right handed if you deal read like this acb clear clear now how are these looking now look at the textbook diagram z this is a i hope okay wait a minute this is c this is c 
and there is there is another interesting fact coming on your way okay this is a yeah, this pink color one pink color one ka kya hai pink color one matlab hai to hai peptide hai aur ye to c hai ye to b hai b a c okay b sorry b c a b c a actually ye peptide contains how many how many amino acids it contains 21 amino acids this contains 33 amino acids wait a minute wait a minute this contains 33 amino acids this contains 30 amino acids all together 33 plus 30 how much the 63 63 plus 21 how much 84 84 is the total number of uh, amino acid count in this insulin this is not mentioned in NCRT leave it leave it leave it simply okay now what the interesting thing is one of the interesting thing is these have disulfide bridges okay one of the interesting thing is this c this t c peptide is eliminated during the maturation of proinsulin actually insulin occurs in the form of proinsulin it occurs in the form of inactive form it is in the form of inactive nature it is in inactive uh, form it is an inactive state in the body once this has been produced, it has to be converted into active state. In order for that, this C peptide is removed and these two B peptide and A peptide chains are joined together. Are joined together and this is uh, the structure of uh, mature insulin. Which peptide is not present in mature insulin? It is a C peptide. It is a C peptide which is not present in the mature insulin clear C peptide is not present in the mature insulin why is this C peptide eradicated this C peptide is eradicated due to the presence of Golgi complex Golgi complex removes this C peptide okay clear now what was the problem that was faced by Elilili company actually they have produced this A uh, uh, we cannot produce pro hormone and we cannot eradicate this so that is what they did is that directly produced a mature insulin what they did is they have produced this A peptide separately, this B peptide chain separately. Now the major problem comes here when they have to unify them both. They now unified these both. They now formed disulfide bonds between these two and they created as an injection. They are injected. While producing both the peptides are produced differently. Remember it while producing both the peptides are produced very differently. Now coming into gene therapy first the gene therapy was done for AD uh, AD uh, deficiency which is also called as uh, AD adenosine diaminase adenosine diaminase it is a uh, gene which is uh, uh, helpful or which is present in lymphocytes uh, when uh, this gene deficiency comes it the disease is called as a skid since it is associated with lymphocytes or lympho immune system see skid means uh, uh, severe combined immune disorder uh, severe combined immune disorder the treatment was first given to a four year girl uh, four year girl uh, they have used this bt only what they did is they have isolated lymphocytes from the human body and uh, they have uh, replaced this non functional non-functional ADA gene with functional ADA gene and they have cultured these lymphocytes outside the human body and they have sent these lymphocytes again into the human body actually the thing here the problem here is these lymphocytes are mortal they are not immortal so that is why they require periodic infusions but is there a permanent cure for this yes there is a permanent cure if this bt or if this gene therapy has been done in their early embryonic stages this can be permanent there are some other technologies like uh, you know enzyme replacement technology and uh, also uh, uh, your uh, enzyme replacement technology and bone marrow transplantation these are also a little temporary then than that this gene uh, therapy is better okay going for gene therapy is better clear clear that is your gene therapy yes now coming into molecular diagnostics see guys ethical issues is the last topic of this uh, this uh, biotechnology ethical issues is not nothing very simple you are leaving everything here 
yeah what to do it uh, exceeds one hour no i don't want that molecular diagnostics come on i'll try i'll try my best molecular diagnostics we have different diagnostic methods we have different diagnostics ct scans we have x rays we have what not mris we have uh, uh, okay ct x rays mris uh, still we have a different diagnostic uh, techniques guys but but using biotechnology while detecting this disease helps in early recognition of disease generally when a pathogen enters no diagnostic test can uh, you know identify it that as soon as the pathogen has entered the body once the pathogen grows once it causes disease symptoms then only the thing is identified then only the pathogen is identified by most of the diagnostic tests that are uh, you know urine test blood test etc etc you know interesting point is we can find 30 diseases using one single urine test test okay but if you use this BT, if you use this BT very properly for molecular diagnostics, you can detect diseases very quickly and that is only being used called as PCR. Have you ever heard RT-PCR? Yes, yes, in Corona time this only has been taking place. In the Corona time we have been undergoing RT-PCR tests everywhere. PCR we have seen in the previous topic how this PCR is done, why this PCR is done, this PCR is done for amplification of small amount of gene, clear, clear, okay, small amount of ampli uh, small amount of gene is there, you can amplify it and you can see the different uh, things, this PCR is generally used for nowadays, it is used for AIDS, AIDS detection of AIDS, now, ELISA ELISA in another molecular diagnostic method oh we are at the end of the pages guys oh my OMG see we are at the end of the pages this is the 30th page yes ELISA enzyme linked immunosorbent assay immunosorbent assay ELISA it works on the principle of antigen and antibody interactions antigens are produced by pathogens and antibodies are produced by human body in against this antigen which is produced by pathogen uh, when you if you can detect even this antigen or antibody you can confirm that disease is there and this ELISA works on that principle only this is your this is your molecular basis guys now now transgenic animals okay add a new page and now coming into transgenic animals okay no 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 we'll be using this only we'll be using this only today raise this clear page where are you clear yes. okay now transgenic animals TAs okay changing the color is very necessary now oh no transgenic animals what are these transgenic animals the animals which whose genetic materials have been same thing whose gen genes have been modified for the human use okay generally transgenic animals can be sheep uh, there can be uh, you know etc etc okay i'm not going into detail mice monkeys okay etc and etc now generally why are these uh, helpful why are these transgenic animals helpful these transgenic animals are helpful for normal physiology development second one to, to study a disease third one biological products fourth one vaccine, uh, vaccine safety testing and fifth one is your chemical safety testing the biological products part is very important for us so let us dive deep into the biological products part actually we have uh, been mentioned in this uh, thing uh, the transgenic animals thing we have been mentioned about two cases one is the rosy case rosy means not a girl it is a cow rosy is a cow uh, Rosy cow has been generally uh, cow's milk, it is giving cow's milk, but we have included lactalbumin, lactalbumin, okay, we have given it 
alpha lacto albumin which is in human milk protein which is present in uh, human milk this is nutritious protein then once we have given this uh, rosy we have transformed this rosy using this alpha lacto albumin and produced more nutritious milk than the original cows not than the humans not than the humans it has produced uh, milk which is more nutritious than the cows okay okay sleep also okay now alpha lacto albumin this is a cow it produced uh, um, it produced human protein rich milk this one alpha lacto albumin milk with alpha lacto albumin uh, 24 grams per liter this was the first transgenic cow which was created rosy in the year 1997 okay this one the second one uh, that was uh, created uh, is uh, a disease treatment for uh, disease treatment for your uh, emphysema emphysema uh, emphysema generally can be treated using uh, alpha 1 antitrypsin antitrypsin this was uh, done in the year uh, here year is not mentioned so let's leave it okay these are your biological some examples of biological products where these transgenic animals have been next one vaccine safety testing vaccine safety testing actually you have to remember the order first mice it is test on next one monkeys next one humans man's triple m mice monkeys man okay that is your vaccine safety testing now ethical issues okay i'm telling you for yourself only okay for your sake only now again you'll put a comment that you know this you are not selling everything you are leaving the last part and telling one shot okay GIAC. there is an there is an organization called as a GIAC, which is called as genetical uh, sorry genetic engineering approval committee which was formed by the indian government in order to put check on bio pi rasi bio pi rasi what is this bio pi rasi no bio pi rasi is the thing see I'll be explaining it is not the thing. A bio virus is actually see here. Look at here. Look at here. Very simple. Uh, actually, poor countries. Poor countries are poor in wealth. In the in the wealth, actually. They're poor in wealth, not in the diversity. They are rich in biodiversity. They are very rich in biodiversity. Whereas the rich countries, they are more richer in wealth than the poor countries, and they are poor in biodiversity poor in biodiversity now what these rich countries do is they exploit these poor countries they exploit these poor countries and they get this biodiversity to their country they modify this and they sell to them they sell again these modified goods to the poor countries itself in order to put check on this this has been done this has been done actually in india in india our farmers our farmers grow nearly 2 lakh varieties of rice 2 lakh varieties of rice out of which are 27 uh, you know f nice flavored basmati rice nice flavored basmati rice the actually basmati rice is of indian, indian origin what did they do is uh, there is an uh, american company i hope it is uh, american yes yes american uh, there is an American company which has took this basmati rice to their uh, country and they have crossbreeded with uh, their uh, local uh, thing and they have created a new invention and they have took patent for this basmati rice. Now what is patent or bio patent? Bio patent is a thing which is given uh, like a copyright like a copyright that no one should use this uh, invention without the permission of that fellow who has invented you have to pay something for that fellow actually basmati rice is of indian origin they have took away basmati rice they have uh, breeded with the uh, rice which is available there the local rice variety and they say that they claim that we have been invented now that is why in order to put check on this 
we have our traditional name and turmeric also and on this also the same thing is happening so in order to put a check on this our india has updated its patent rights and also it has updated its patent rights now and also it has found a committee called as gr committee now anyone if they want to see actually producing genetic organisms is much difficult actually what happens is these genetic organisms uh, are very too dangerous to handle sometimes so in order to if you want to create some genetic organism or gmo genetically modified organism you have to get an approval from giac otherwise it is not possible to create and genetically modified organisms this is your ethical issues that is it guys that we have completed applications part of biotechnology within one shot the one shot one hour guys so that has extended that 10 minutes has extended for this uh, you know the ethical issues part only uh, this is Vamji signing off from uh, Biolab India and uh, I hope you have enjoyed the session please hit that like button and also subscribe to our channel Biolab India this is Vamji signing off and also have a great day further guys thanks for watching Bye-bye. Jai Hind. Jai Bharat.